So when it comes to building computers, there's a lot of things that need to go right in order for it to come together and a lot of things that just go wrong when trying to build it. So today we'll go over a few tricks and tips to going ahead and making your first computer building experience a lot more easier. Hey guys, Steve Modi here back in that video and I guess we'll start off with going down our list, starting off with actually grounding yourself before you start working. Now before you go ahead and start touching hard drives and video cards and all those kind of things, you need to make sure you're not carrying any electrostatic charge, otherwise you may zap them and actually actually kill them. Now the best way to go ahead and do this is grab the power supply you bought to go ahead and build your system, go ahead and plug it into the wall with the power turned off and just go ahead and touch the metal surface on it. You should be grounded and everything should be fine. But if you're just doing some work on your computer and you don't have a power supply just sort of lying around, you can go ahead and touch your PC case or any other large object that's well fairly large compared to what you are. So the basic way of this is, is all the electricity will go into that and your computer components won't be zapped. Also too, make sure you're not working on any sort of carpet or wearing any socks at the same time as those also to attract electrostatic charge and well you can kill your systems and it's just better off not to have that. It's also too recommended to go ahead and have some sort of strap on either your arm or your ankle or even a mat that is anti-static which is going to definitely help you there and I personally do recommend them. So once we actually get into building our computer my next recommendation comes along the line of actually mounting your cooler. Now many coolers do come out on the market with pre-applied thermal compound which are generally found on the bottom of many Intel box coolers and quite a few other ones that are on the market but there are quite a few out there that require you to put your own amount of thermal compound on and well that's where some people do get quite confused whether it be an all-in-one water cooler like one of these ones there is a certain amount that you need to put on to actually get it right and in terms of that it's usually a small uncooked grain of rice amount of compound now I've seen people completely not put it on in general which will definitely not be good for your PC's cooling capacity and also also too too much so make sure you do keep to that amount and if you put a little bit too much just wipe it off and start again most thermal compound tubes come with enough to do three or four installs without any problems there so if you use a little bit too much just wipe it off and continue on but don't go flooding your CPU area with thermal compound because some of them are conductive which means you'll basically short out your motherboard and CPU and have well a dead system before you can even get started so do make sure you don't put too much on and again if you put too much not a worry just wipe it off then we go on to actually mounting all the parts into our case and that's where the next one is not all screws are created the same if you go ahead and line up all the screws in your case you'll see that not all of them are actually the same even though they may look the same the threads could be different the heads could be different and the lengths are different whether it be for mounting hard drive video cards CPU coolers motherboards anything like that they are quite all different so do address your manual before you go ahead and try mounting anything because you can damage not only standoffs but also to just holes in your case for actual fan mounts if you don't use the right ones. Now speaking of mounting video cards and those kind of things, video cards do need screws so if you're going ahead and actually doing anything like that, putting a video card in, make sure it's screwed in properly as trying to jam the connector in the back of the case can either cause the PCI Express connector down the bottom to snap or just for it to fall out of the slot and possibly break something else in your system. So do make sure it's plugged in and as well make sure it's screwed in and I guess on the topic of being plugged in, make sure you have power to them because I've seen quite a few computers come out and well people forget to go ahead and plug the power in and it just won't turn on and then moving on we I guess need to have a clean workspace to go ahead and build your system working in a cluttered environment is not going to be good and you're going to be losing screws packets and just things that you need to build your system will be just lost in the mess so try and find a clear spot if you don't have a table maybe move some stuff off the table for now and go ahead and use things like motherboard boxes and uh, other component boxes just to lift it off the table to go ahead and have a nice clean workspace and also to make sure you're not eating or drinking around these components because you're not going to have a very good time with the warranty department if you return your video card full of like pizza and orange juice and those kind of things it's not going to be going down very well. Next up we have my usual thing and usual recommendation whenever it comes to building or doing anything and that is having the correct size tools. Having a too big screwdriver, having a too small screwdriver or just having some weird other tool and trying to use it to fix your computer or work on it is never a really good idea. Picking yourself up a toolkit like this might be a little bit more expensive but something down from like the eBay buys is definitely still great this one I believe was like five or six bucks at an eBay auction so it's not actually half that bad and you can get some pretty good tools for pretty low prices and I always recommend having a few different sizes in case something happens and well you need to go ahead and continue working your system and our final tip is fan orientation lots of people do get confused with this and especially when trying to mount water coolers or just air cooling in general it can get a little bit tricky and a little bit confusing so we're 
going to break it down fairly simple. We have the front which has no framing, we have the back which has framing. The airflow goes from the front to the back and you can always tell which way is the back because again that framing. Now some higher end fans or some more premium ones actually go ahead and have a little arrow on some point of the side to tell you which way the air actually flows through but for the most part just look at it if there's no frame on the front that is the front and the air will travel through there and you're pretty much set for that. So guys with that being said that is a few tips and tricks there's obviously a lot more you can do but those are sort of the basic ones that should get you started off building your computer so like or dislike the video accordingly let me know what you would go and have as your tips that you would have for someone else building their first computer also to give the sub if you like what we're doing and check out stevemodder.com if you want to see more articles and news and all those good things i'll see you all next time for another video